Gratitude brings us into the presence of God. Psalm 100 reads, Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name, for the Lord is good, and his steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. Tradition credits Psalm 100 to King David, but modern scholarship agrees that dating this psalm is guesswork, making it impossible to know for sure if David wrote this psalm. But although it is impossible to know who wrote it and when it was written, there is a general consensus to at least one thing. And I think Marvin Tate sums it up best in the word biblical commentary saying, the present form of the Psalm and its position in the Psalter probably represent the post-exilic period. Its original composition may have been much earlier or it may be a part of a longer psalm from an earlier date. In other words, it's possible that the psalm is much longer and that it was written much earlier. But before the psalm was canonized in the Psalter, it was sung from generation to generation until it took its final form after the Israelites came out of Babylon. And this would be a convincing argument because the Israelites would have returned from exile in the year 538 before Christ and although it's debated, the earliest date that we have for when the Psalms were canonized into the Old Testament is the year 400, meaning that there would have been enough time for this Psalm to take its final form before the Psalter was canonized. Now, why is this important? It is important because understanding when it was written, or in this case, when it took its final form, orients us to how we should read the psalm. In this case, it's a psalm of thanksgiving after a long period of suffering and uncertainty. It is not composed in a time of prosperity and plenty. Rather, it is a song composed on the other side of ashes and sorrow. But this isn't just any psalm. It is a temple psalm, meaning that it was sung by worshipers as they entered the temple. And we know this because of the title, which in Hebrew reads, Mismor Letoda, which refers to the sacrifice of thanksgiving in the sanctuary. And according to the book of Leviticus, there were five main types of offerings. The burnt, the grain, the peace, the sin, and the trespass offering. And the sacrifice of thanksgiving fell under the category of peace offering. And the peace offering was offered after wondrous occasions of salvation when a person would be saved from death, sickness, or distress. The requirements of the sacrifice were unique, but what was most unique about the sacrifice was that it was the only sacrifice where the person could eat part of the sacrifice. Think about that. The only time the Israelites were allowed to eat a part of the sacrifice which is just another way of saying they shared a meal with God, was when they were offering a sacrifice of thanksgiving. In that case, it would make sense that this song would take its final form after the exile. If this psalm truly came into its final form after the return of the exile, then truly this is a beautiful image. Here are the exiles returning from Babylon empty-handed and in rags. And one of the first pieces of poetry implemented is a psalm of thanksgiving for the peace offering so that they may have communion with God. And again, why is all this important? Because when something was written, or in this case, when it took its final form, orients us to understand how we should read the psalm. In this case, it's a psalm of thanksgiving after a time of severe suffering. But there is also a lesson for us to take away from this. And that is that in times of uncertainty and of suffering, it may feel unnecessary to give thanks. In times of waiting and longing, it might feel ridiculous to feel grateful for something that we haven't received yet. On the other side of ashes and sorrow, it may feel ludicrous to offer appreciation. But like the peace offering, it is the praise of a grateful heart that brings us into the presence of God. 
It is the praise of a grateful heart that brings us into communion with Him and into the joy of salvation. And as Jews, the apostles knew that the thanksgiving sacrifice and that thanksgiving in general was the means of communion with God. This is why Paul encouraged the church in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18 through 20, be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart, giving thanks always and for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. By our gratitude, we have communion with God. At this point, you might ask the question, but pastor, how do I give thanks? How do I show my gratitude? How do I give thanks in such a way that it brings me into the presence of God? Does anyone know something interesting? There is no word in biblical Hebrew that properly means to thank. The Hebrew behind thanks and thanksgiving is the word toda, which more closely means praise and is often translated as praise. And regarding its verbal form, the T-dot says that the word has a range of meanings. Quote, the first is praise, sing a hymn. Remember that passage in Ephesians we just read? The second is confess. And Marvin Tate describes Toda as a praise that is declarative or refers to what God has done or descriptive of what he characteristically does. In the Bible, praise and thanksgiving are inseparable ideas. Ideas, so much so that there is no word for the latter and it is simply assumed in praise. This is why all biblical calls to give thanks and show gratitude are followed by a confession or a long history of what God has done. So if you want to know how to give thanks, how to show gratitude, the kind that brings you into the presence of God, this is what you can do. List what God has done for you. List what God is doing for you right now and list what you know by faith that God will do for you in the future. List his characteristics, declare who he is, sing a song of praise. All of these are biblical examples of Todah, the kind that brings us into communion with God and into the joy of salvation. My friend, today may you toda. If you enjoyed that video, subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.